Welcome back Stoner Squad and of course a big welcome to all those new to the channel. My name is Danny Stone and thank you for joining me today for some more Imperial of Rome but more precisely playing with the Bronze Age mod enabled. Now what is the Bronze Age mod? Well it's a total overhaul mod for Imperial of Rome and it basically changes the geographical location and the overall starting date of the game. So instead of playing around the whole of the Mediterranean Basin, um, Asia Minor, India, um, North Africa, Northern Europe, it basically reduces the map size I would say to the eastern part of the Mediterranean all the way down to Egypt and Lower Egypt and all the way across into Mesopotamia. It doesn't necessarily mean that the game is smaller. As you can see, instead of having a multitude of big kingdoms and republics vying for power along the different regions of the game, the world is split up into a myriad of small independent states set during the Bronze Age, which is around about 2000 years BC. Which is pretty damn crazy, and it really does change the whole dynamic and feel of the game, and it is a mod that I cannot recommend enough. It is a pretty damn good one at that. Now, I have played it before, and I played it before the 2.0 Maris update, and I haven't really touched it since. And with Imperial Rome being shelved for the foreseeable future by the devs, so they can concentrate on other things... I'm guessing notably Vicky 3 and then spreading the team around through the other Paradox Productions, Hearts of Iron 4 and stuff. The game put on the back burner, so why? I thought it would be a good time to kind of go through some of the mods and play some mods to try and keep the damn game alive because I love Imperial of Rome. It is awesome, and for me, it is my favourite Paradox game so far, period. I mean, I like all the other Paradox games, but this one ticks the most boxes for me, and I, I really love the damn game. So I thought, why not get back into it. But anyway, now begs the question, where are we going to play? Now, there's a load of potential opportunities. I mean, I did think about going to play in Greece over here somewhere, maybe Athens. Uh, but I did a community post the other day asking you with the um, upcoming Invictus mod, which is another big mod that's coming out pretty soon, where would you like me to play? And you all voted overwhelmingly in favour of the Hellenic world. So to make things interesting, I thought, well, since you voted the Hellenic world for the Invictus mod, we're not going to be playing in the Hellenic, or would I say pre-Hellenic world, because it's like set in the Bronze Age, so I don't think we can necessarily characterise it as Hellenic anymore, because um, I don't think it's necessarily Hellenic down here just yet. Um, but I thought, well, since we're playing in the, or we're going to be playing in the Hellenic world with the Invictus mod, we need to change the setting over here, so maybe not in Greece. Uh, then I thought, well, in Mesopotamia, I've already played, we played down with Ord at some point, and did a pretty big campaign with that. Um, I think I also played a few campaigns, um, I may not have recorded it on YouTube, but I played a few on my own um, down on the Syrian coastline here, and then it just kind of, like, everything fell into place, and I thought, well, in this tight time period, 2000 years BC, where was the most important place, probably, in the ancient world? And it has got to be Egypt, or the Nile kind of river, along the Nile River. This is where you have the great pyramids that have been built. You have the great kingdoms of Egypt and stuff. So I thought, well, why not try to make a great pharaonic Egyptian kingdom of our own? I mean, it does sound pretty cool to do. And there's a lot of stuff to do down here. I mean, it is really... Look at all these, like, small independent states with a load of different territories. I mean, Jesus Christ. It, the, the map, as I said, it looks reduced. I mean, the area in which you play as has been reduced, but it doesn't make the game less small. They've kind of divided it into a load of small provinces, which actually makes it look a lot bigger, or makes it feel a lot bigger than it actually looks. Uh, but anyway, we're going to be playing down in Egypt, and one of the two main dynasties, now we have the um, this one here, the 10th dynasty of Henan Nasut, um, ruled by Meriathor the First Keti, and then of course the big rival, and this one is um, Upper um, Lower Egypt, sorry, um, oh no, Upper Egypt, and then you have down in Lower Egypt down here. Um, oh no, sorry, is, is it the way around? I think this must be Upper Egypt and Lower Egypt. Which way is it? There we go. Lower Egypt, of course, towards the sea. Upper Egypt the other way. Okay, so that makes sense. Um, and so, yeah, these guys are basically uh, one of the kind of main kind of players in um, uh, Lower Egypt. And of course, then you have the Wasset of the 11th Dynasty in Upper Egypt. And I want to go with Wasset just because it just sounds cool. And um, it's got a load of farmlands here. It's got a big Nile River, which you can actually can't cross. There's only a few intervals at which you can cross it, which makes it super interesting for strategic gameplay as well. Uh, but we're going to play this guy. So who is this guy then? He's called Intef the First Kui Amun. 
Um, he is a pharaoh, and of course one of multiple pharaohs. Is there any more? No, this is a nomarch. I think there's only two pharaohs. It's this one and this one, and these are the two vying for power. I don't think there's any more. No, there isn't. So Wasit and Henan Nassau. Uh, but this guy's called Intif the First Kui Amun. He's a pretty decent ruler, 9886. Pretty decent. Uh, there's 17 territories, or seven, yeah, 17 little territories in the kingdom of, or the, the pharaoh ship, or kingdom. I'm going to call it kingdom. I don't even know what it would be called, like pharaoh ship. That sounds wrong. Um, but in the kingdom down here, he's got 17 territories, 186 pops, um, which is quite nice. Uh, our 11th dynasty is basically our tradition, or not our tradition, sorry, our heritage. And this gives us plus one fabricate claim speed. We're really going to make claims a lot quicker. And we have minus two diplo reputation, which is a bit of a pain. Uh, but we do have plus uh, minus 10%, sorry, to the build mortuary temple stage cost. Now, from what I remember, they are specific buildings or specific wonders that you can build. That you can build. Um, I mean, I, I this was pre 2.0. They had like new specific buildings they added. I don't know how they've reworked this with the 2.0 update, who brought which brought a load of different buildings into the game. So it's going to be interesting to see how they've worked that out. Um, we are the Egyptian dynasty government form, which gives us one military idea, one civic idea, and two religious ideas. Um, and if we fill them out, we get plus 10% slave output. I think minus 100% attrition. I think. I think that's that. And plus 20% civ value. What is that minus 40%? Is that minus 40% to assault ability? I don't know. That is interesting. Uh, Religion-wise, we're comedic, which gives our ruler the following, plus 0.10 ruler pop gain per month. And our culture is upper comedic, and pops belonging to this culture can raise the following levies, archers, heavy chariots, axemen, and spearmen, each to varying to varying percentages. Anyway, now that intro is out of the way and we know who we're playing as, let's dive right into the game. So, um, let's go. Let's start as Intef, the first Kui Amun. Okay, so here we are. We start off with the first intermediate period. So a little bit of a backstory, I think, on the starting location and the timeline. So the land of Egypt has, for several decades now, been stricken by severe drought, causing starvation and chaos. The glorious old kingdom has collapsed and the centralised rule of Egypt has gone with it. The old governors and their provinces, also called Nomarchs and Nomes, have become independent, but the 10th uh, dynasty at Henen Nasut still claim continuity from the old dynasties of the old kingdom. The more ambitious Nomarchs, not satisfied with just one known, see their opportunity to found a new divine dynasty blessed by the gods to restore order to the Nile Valley. These are times of both danger and opportunity. Every territory in Egypt gains the effect Egyptian drought minus 75% local food modifier. So the game is set in a period of massive drought. Uh, the old Egyptian kingdom has totally collapsed, as you can see, uh, which means that the whole kind of Egyptian like dynasty is gone and it all split up into a multitude of different states with basically two pharaohs vying for power. You've got the Henen, the Sut and the Wasset ones here. And of course then the old nomarchs who were the old governors, I guess. Um, for example, Nekin here is an old nomarch of our own. And he happens to be allied with Henen and the Sut to the north, which does add a challenge to us. And he is our direct pretender to power in the area. So I'm looking forward to this. I hope you guys are too. I can't speak highly enough of this mod. I, I, I really can't. It is something that is... It's a, it's a mod that is absolutely goddamn brilliant. And it really does give a totally different feel to the game. Just down to the fact that it just kind of transports you to a different time period. Which is completely different from the ancient classical era um, that Imperator Rome actually puts you in. Um, they have also added like extra units and troops, different unit types to go with the age and stuff, and it is super interesting. I'm very interested to see how the guys who've made the mod implemented legions and stuff into it, because that wasn't in when they first brought it out. Um, but there's, there's a load of stuff that's going to be interesting to check out along the way. But anyway, let's get rolling. So, idea slot first. Um, we Oh, we have Declare a Unified Egypt. That is a mission we can do. And we can change the name to Commit. So I think the objective of this series has got to be to declare a unified Egypt. I mean, there's no, no other reason why we can declare one big, massive, unified Egypt for the glory of the old comedic gods, which is definitely what we're going to be doing. But anyway, let's pop, on, or pop in our idea slots here. Um, have they changed this? I don't think so. I think they're still the same as in the base game, but we'll fill that accordingly. So we'll go for the amount of armies plus 10% here. Oh, that's powerful. It's 10%. They've changed that. Was it 5 I think it was 5% in the base game. Yeah, they've modified, I think they've modified a few things a little bit. Oh, central urban spaces, that is something new. I don't think that is. Institute tariff exceptions. Yeah, I think they've changed a few things here, actually. Which is pretty cool, I have to say. 
I do like that. But anyway, let's go martial ethos first here. Uh, what's our religion, by the way? It's all comedic, which is actually good, which means our religious unity is going to be in, you know, it's like 100% maximum religious unity, which is fantastic. So that means we don't really need to go for the institutional proselytism. Now here I'm going to fill this out because I want the national slave output plus 10%. It's going to be quite useful. And what do we go for here? Provincial loyalty, national commerce, income, or the build cost and the build time. That's going to be interesting. I don't know how much gold we make, by the way. Let's see how much cash we make. We currently make 3.12. Okay. How many trade routes do I have potentially? I've got one there and I've got none here. So I don't have any trade routes really down in this sector. So am I going to need this? Not really. So I think we're going to go for the build cost and the build time. Just because I'm, I'm obviously going to want to get buildings. Where's our capital, by the way? Wasit. What do we have? Building-wise. So it looks like the... They had old... They had new buildings added um, before pre-Marius. I think they've got rid of that now because of the changes that Marius brought. Unless it's locked in the Great Wonder section. But I don't think it is. So no, it looks like the, um, they've kept the building. So none of this has really changed, I don't think. Which is interesting. Very interesting indeed. Um, what do we need now here? I'm going to go for the Omen power plus 20%. That is powerful. Mandated observance. Especially considering our Omen kind of unity or religious unity is 100%. This is going to boost it up a lot. So I'll pop that on. And then for the last one, we'll probably go for the monthly war exhaustion. I mean, why not? That is going to be pretty useful. I could go with the corruption stuff, but no, we'll go for the religious calendar. We'll fill out our idea slots and correspond them correctly. Next, we need an omen. So, what do I want to go for? Political influence change is quite nice. Do I own the Temple of Wasit? We do. It's in Wasit. We've got the Statue of Montu in there, which gives us cohort starting experience, which is okay, I suppose. I have no other treasures. The Temple of Nekan is owned by our neighbour. The Temple of Saka is owned up north. Um, Amun doesn't have a holy site. Is there any other one we can have? I mean, I'm going to keep this one for the experience decay. I mean, I'm going to have to. I mean, I own the holy site and I didn't want to get... But I want to kind of use our kind of relics. Do I want to change this, though? This is a good question. What do we got? We've got the build cost reduction. We've got an extra trade route. I mean, I could change some of this. But the monthly political influence generated is pretty powerful. What about this one? This is for all the pop game. State religion happiness. An integrated culture happiness. This is pretty good. Civilization change. We've got assimilation speed as well. What's the culture? It's low. It's upper comedic. So that's fine. We're going to have pretty much full there. Apart from Mukedi there. Completely different. But I don't intend to go there just yet. I probably don't need to change that yet. What's this one? Omen effect. Urban development cost plus 5.04. Okay. That actually gives you a negative trade-off. That's interesting. And the last one, what we got here, we got monthly legitimacy, which is quite good. And I change this for something. I could, but you know what? I'm not really going to change it just yet. We're going to go for the extra political influence, to be honest. We'll go for the blessing of a month, which is good. Um, it it would have been cool if they actually did proper images. I mean, I may be asking for a bit much here, but if they did Egyptian god images here, that would be pretty cool if they did that. Uh, so now we've got our Romans sorted. Um, what do we want to do next? We can go for some inventions, and aha, this is what I remember. Now, they've done something pretty cool with tech, and they've added this section down at the bottom. I, I'm very interested to see how they implement this with the new revamped tech in um, that was brought with 2.0 Marius, and it's going to be interesting to see how it all kind of blends together, and hopefully it all blends correctly. Now... Here we've got, so you have the basically the same principle where you have your researchers that go up tech levels and stuff and you gain like kind of uh, innovations that you can spend. But you have the added effect of um, when you go up a level, I think you have um, points that you can invest into one of these eight different characters um, or categories. So palatial development, uh, which concerns all like diplomatic stuff, then trade developments for trade, writing is going to be for like um, improving happiness, um, your kind of pops, taxes, civilization level and stuff. Law progress is going to be the same, urbanizations for city building slots, and it can then allows you to plan metropolises and stuff. And there's like a load of different stuff that you can really choose to go towards. And it makes it very interesting because it makes you focus on going down what you need. I mean, if you want to find a metropolis, then we're going to have to focus your efforts on uh, being able to create an imperial centre. You can't just found a metropolis straight off the bat. And it's all very interesting. Uh, but anyway, first of all, I think we're going to go military thing because there's something here with fortified garrisons which allows me to construct the garrison building. So it allows you to build forts. Uh, without it, I don't think we can build them. Um, I think it's a... Is it a garrison or... Or is it fortification? What is it? 
Where's the garrison building? I haven't seen the garrison building. That's a workshop. Peacekeepers. Yeah, they've renamed, like, the... Um, some of the buildings. They've actually renamed them and changed what they do. That's pretty good. And the garrison here. So this gives us fort defense plus 50%. So it's, it can actually, like, couple that with the fort, which would be pretty cool. Um, but we're going to go for this because I want the extra morale. The army maintenance cost goes up, but I want the 5% morale. So with that and the kind of bonus we took with our national idea gives us plus 15% amount of armies, which is pretty damn powerful and it's going to be pretty damn useful. Uh, we still have another couple of points to assign here um, in the civilization tech point. So each time you go up a level, you gain a point in this that you can spend in these like different categories. And then you spend the, in the innovations as well, then buying what you want. So do I go for another military structure? No. Irrigation... Uh, what about urbanization? Bureaucracy. King's justice. Uh, what are my citizens like? How many citizens? What are my ratios? My ratios are too high in my current cities. And I'm probably going to need to get more. So what if I was to go with the desired citizen ratio in cities? I could go trade for capital import route. Or the diplo rep. Or the loyalty of characters. Now, I do have someone that's disloyal. So, I reckon, first of all, loyalty of characters is going to be the one we want to go for. I, I mean, that would help. So, we'll go for the loyalty of characters quickly. That's going to increase the loyalty of people by 5. That gets him up to 29 now, which isn't too bad. I can then probably just bribe him to get him back onto my side. It's the guy with the most power base. So, I'm actually going to quickly bribe you. Or should I grant you a holding? I mean, I suppose I could grant you a hold, but I'll probably bribe you. You know what, let's bribe. We'll bribe you, we'll get you on our side, so that gets rid of the one of the guys that can potentially be annoying for civil war. I'm also going to bribe this guy, so we can have our governors under control, because of course, the collapse of the Egyptian, of the kind of old kingdom, has made everything unstable, so I want to keep that all stable. Um, what next? I've got another point, and I'm very tempted to go for... Maybe a bit of city administration. I really am. This enables the establishing of foreign trading colonies. That's basically um, colony. That's basically colonizing. But I'm pretty sure that's what that is. Let's go for the desired citizen ratio. I think in our cities to keep it up as high as possible. I really don't. It will come into effect at the end of the month, but I just want to keep my citizens as high as we can possibly get them. Uh, by the way, speaking of changes, what the laws do? L laws change here a little bit. A little bit. Nothing really major. I don't think there's too much change here. I think it's pretty much the same laws, which is interesting. I like I like the um the artwork though, the different like the clothing and stuff. You can tell you can so tell that it's like Egyptian. It's that that's really cool. But anyway, we now can spend some of our innovations. So I reckon we're gonna go down the military side of things pretty quickly. Um just because it's gonna help us at war. I mean we're gonna need to fight someone and I think the first target has gotta be our neighbour here. I mean, he seems to be weaker than us. And I would like to be able to try and start moving north to gain enough power so we can take on the former... No, uh, is it no Nomad? The Nomark. So take on one of the former kind of governors of the old kingdom. So I'm thinking maybe... We'll go military artisans. Okay. Then we'll go learning on the job. I do want the axemen discipline. How much axemen do we have? I have three axemen in there. They're basically kind of the equivalent of heavy, heavy infantry axemen. I'm pretty sure. Pretty damn decent as well. So, do I want to go down that road? I've got 11 points. Okay, so I can go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I can go 6 down here. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. That's, I can't get cohorts yet. I mean, I might want to do that. I, I might, I might, I might. I don't know just yet. There's an output. Pretty decent. Aggressive match and impact could be nice as well. I'm going to go for the quickly the loyalty of characters. That's going to help a little bit. It really is. Humane conduct, the diplo rep. I am actually going to take that because it offsets the some of the negative diplo rep that we gained um, due to our kind of heritage. In terms of religious advances, do I really need anything on this side? Not really. So I think we'll go down the military section now. So we'll go learning on the job. We'll go recruitment standards. And we'll go for the Fustuarium here, which gives us the Axeman discipline, which is what I want. 
And I want to go down to Active Drill as well. So we get more starting experience. We'll go for Active Drill, which is pretty good. And we'll go for Professional Training, which is going to be nice. Um, so I'm happy with that. Do I need anything else here? I could probably go for... I could probably go for some Fort Defense or some Sapping as well. Or some Scythian Saddles. Yeah, we're going to go down here. We'll go Material Science, a Boetian Helmet for more Discipline, and then Scythian Saddles for the Chariots. We have a few of them. And now I'm pretty sure we have, like... A fair amount of military advantage over our neighbours, just to kind of make sure. And the next thing we need is trade routes. And I have enough food or not? I don't know. I think we're going to import food. Just because we are currently in the midst of a drought. And they have actually added um, some this, some extra cool resources. Like fruit. That's like a new one. Uh, you've got reeds as well. And um, I think they're used for different things. And um, like nature as well. That's pretty cool. I'm, I'm sure some of the resources are used to build things. I, I'm pretty sure. But let's go for some fruit. What does a surplus of fruit do? Loyalty of characters plus five. Hell yeah, let's take that. We'll go for a surplus of fruit. Get it from Ged too. We'll get it from you guys. That's extra loyalty for our characters to make sure they're not going to pee me off. I'll happily take that. And we've got some scorned families, by the way. I need to check that out. So we've got the red ones, the Kriamun. That's the ruling family. It's me. And we need to give them some positions. At least one. Um, what about you? You're loyal. Do I have better than you? I don't think I do, actually. Oh, no, I don't, because, of course, looks like we have nobody... We don't have enough people in our family to help us rule. So that's why. But anyway, next thing we need to get our guy married. Um, can we arrange a marriage with somebody? How old? How old are you? You're 23. The Amun. It's part of the... I think you can only really marry within your family. What, what, are, the, what are the laws? What do we got? Agnatic primogeniture, okay. So it's not that. So what if we were to seek a spouse and try to get on the side of one of our major families? Right, Sobegatop Inimut. Yeah, we'll um we'll do it with you. And we'll see if we can get like um a kind of a wife from his family. If you're seeking a spouse from him, I am going to quickly grant you a holding in order to make sure you stay loyal with me and allow me to marry one of your family members, which is what I want. And now I think that's pretty much done. We can lock and load. Now, we can. there's some missions here. Oh, Unite Upper Egypt and the Matter of Southern Upper Egypt. Okay, this is interesting. So we've got some specific mission trees here. So Unite Upper Egypt. What's the region of Upper Egypt? This Upper Egypt? It's Southern Upper Egypt. This is... What's this one? Middle Upper Egypt. Northern Upper Egypt. And then Southern... Okay, okay. So like, like basically it's all split. So, Unite Upper Egypt, as the old pharaonic seat of Amen and the Fur continues to slide into impotent irrelevancy, uh, nowhere is the retreat of the royal power more acutely felt in our region. As Upper Egypt generates into anarchy, it falls on none other than us to restore the divine order. The mission will be completed when all of Egypt from Abu to Zorti has been conquered. So where's Abu? I do want to find out where this is before we actually choose the damn thing. So Abu... Oh god, I've got English keyboard, haven't I, of course. Um, Abu is down here, okay, so looks like we're going to have to try and get down there. That's down there, okay. Fair enough, fair enough. And Zawati. Where is Zawati? I do want to find out where that is. And uh, no, that's not the Z. Where is my Z on the... Of course I've got French keyboard on, so there we go. So I can actually use the keyboard to move around. Uh, Zawati, Zawati. There it is. So let's see. That's all the way up here. Okay, so we've sort of got to go all the way from here to there and down there. Fair enough. And the matter of southern upper Egypt. So the entire region is under our control. What is this region? Southern upper Egypt is down here. This is the first thing we can do. And I think this is going to be pretty easy to do before we do that. So we might as well try to focus on this. The matter of southern upper Egypt. Hmm. Actually, this is like a this is a, this is a unique mission tree. So, you know what? Let's go for the unique mission tree. Let's try it. It is the unique mission tree for this place, so we're definitely going to try that out. Anyway, well, first of all, we've got Kush and the Nomarchs. Two of the Falcons, nine dominated by us. So, what's this? So it looks like we're going to have to have. We need to crush the Nomarchs first, then up north. Okay, we can crush the Nomarchs. Ah, oh, the City of the Dead. That is so cool. Oh, I love these. I love. I love these like unique mission stuff. It, it looks pretty cool. But we can try and crush the nomarchs. That should be pretty easy to do. 
And we can definitely focus on going towards that sector. Of course, these guys are our enemies here, so we'll definitely try and take them out. Can I call on a war council? I can. Let's summon a war council. And luckily for us, it's brought us Geb to first. Which we're just don't... We're, de we're definitely going to do that. Who loses loyalty? I just want to make sure that... The ferrant you do, and you do. So it's not the guy I'm trying to marry into his family, so... We'll take out the Geb 2. The Geb 2 are the ones we're going to want to take out. They're right next door. Um, now that it's done, I think we're pretty much ready to rumble. I can't think of anything else that I need to get ready. Uh, Military-wise, we have got a decent amount of men, to be honest. We have more than a decent amount, to be fair. We've got... Yeah, we've got, and we've got a supply train, which, which is pretty good. I like that. A trade, we've got that. Okay, culture-wise, um, what can we do? We're up a comedic, all of them. I don't need to change anything with that yet. Religion's all good. And I'm happy. So let's lock and load. Let's go. Bim, bam, and bloody boom. So, first target is you, as soon as we can declare war. So the 1st of Feb, we'll declare the war. Let's um, actually raise our levies first. Get you guys up with me. Can I make an alliance with anybody? Yeah, you hate me. This is all colonizable. Um, Hennet want an alliance. But I want to take them on. I can get an alliance with Abu. And I might get an alliance with Abu. It would stop Nekan from moving further down. And it will block one of the Nomads. Or the Nomarchs. I keep saying Nomads, but it's Nomark. That might be a good option. Um, we're going to offer an alliance with you. So that's going to block this guy in. And hopefully... It's kind of a like political power play here. This guy is allied with our nemesis, Henan Nasut. And we're allying with him. Who's your enemies, by the way? You have many enemies. You've got to claim... No, that's your vassal. Is there an opinion map mode? I don't know if there's an opinion map mode. I don't think there is. I can't remember if there is an opinion map mode. Let me have a look. Players, trade goods, population. There's not really a big opinion map mode. That's a shame. Uh, but anyway, we've done that kind of diplomatic alliance there, which is what I want. Um, let's up the army morale, by the way, pretty quickly. We'll up the army maintenance a little bit. I do want to make sure we have enough morale. We have quite a decent amount, to be fair. Um, as soon as the 1st of Feb hits, we'll go to war. And we'll take this guy out. He's got a fort over here, by the way. And I don't think it's going to take too long to take him out. Do we have a fort on this side? I don't. Which is a shame. I would like to get one. Especially on this side of the river. Ah, I'm limited to two of these in any given territory. And it costs 200 gold. It actually makes sense because it is super expensive. I mean, building a fort, I can imagine that building a fort is not going to be, like, super easy to do. Anyway, are you allied with anyone now? Can I take you on? Let's double check this. No, you're not. So I am going to kill you pretty quickly. Um, anyway, influence of the Ki Amun family. So the fate of the kingdom and that of the Ki Amun family is always and will always be intertwined. It is therefore a matter of great urgency. There are currently not enough Ki Amun persons of quality ready to shoulder the responsibilities of the state. I can bring in Hisiwa or Nefhotep into my family. And I'm going to bring in the royal tutor, I think. Just because he's got a cool name. Nefhotep. Got this guy. Hisiwa Mebri Wedget. We'll bring in Nefhotep. He's loyal to me. We'll bring you in. And you can... Ad I'm not going to let you adopt my name. I'm going to keep your old family name. I don't want to have you adopt the family name. So, we'll do that. Um, now, I think we can pretty much declare war on this guy. I'm pretty confident that I have better morale than him. We are playing against the AI, by the way. And the AI is not the smartest cookie around. I can hire these guys. It, I could potentially hire them if I needed to. Let me quickly see how I want to organise my army here. Again, there's a load of different units. So, you have, like, archers, spearmen... Chariots and Axemen. Now, Axemen are good against Spearmen. But not good against Heavy Chariots, Skirmishers. I mean, I don't know how to really organise it. I mean, in Polar Rome, the base game, I'm used to, I know exactly what I want. And how I want to organise things. Now, I don't really know. Heavy Chariots are good against everything apart from Spearmen. So, I reckon we'll put Heavy Chariots first. Spearmen are good against pretty much everything apart from Axemen. I mean, what's the manoeuvre? One. Archers have two maneuver. We'll put archers on the flank. Because they have two maneuver. And I'll put the spearmen in the back line. And the axemen can fill in afterwards. I honestly have no idea if that's the right thing to do. But let's just get rolling. Bim, bam, boom. So, uh, take two falcons, no mage. Let's do it. Go to war with Abu. And I can't bring in Abu? Oh, I could. But I need to wait for the 6th of Feb. I'll wait till the 6th of Feb. 
I'll bring an Abu now, just in case. You never know. They might be able to, like, move men across. I hope they can. Um, so, let's do the war. Let's go. First war, people. First war of the Bronze Age Mark, trying to reunite the old kingdom of Egypt. So, now we need to rush over here quickly and try and get his units before they come across over here. Is this a sing singular region? It is a singular region, so he's not going to be able to raise them here. They're going to be raiding his capital. I no longer have any trade, so I need to get the stuff back. Um, oh, surplus of that, of copper in the capital, gives us discipline. Surplus of veg gives us move slave costs. What about livestock? Hot promotion speed. Fish gives us freeman happiness. Grain I've already got. I'm just going to go for the... Um, let's go for the livestock, really. Just something for the food. I mean, I don't think we make... Actually, do we make 39? Wow, of course, on like the fertile plains and stuff. It, it does make sense. Anyway, let's move. So let's see where we're going to go. I'm going to slow the game speed down here so I can actually kind of get to grips with what we need to do. Now, I think I can take this dude down. Oh, yeah, I can. I can use that. What can I catch you? No, he's running around this way, so... We're going we're gonna to shadow him. We'll follow him around and see where he goes. He's got... He's nowhere near got enough men to deal with me. So I'm going to go over here quickly. Yeah, we've caught this guy. He's dead. Who is our commander, by the way? It is led by ourself, by the way. Intef the first, who's leading the men. He is a founder, which gives us minus 5% build cost and some stability change. And he's ambitious, which actually goes well with the plans to reunite both crowns of Egypt. But anyway, let's go into the battle and see how this is going to plan out here. So we've got the two lines going in a farming terrain, which gives us 20 combat width. He has currently placed what? Let's see. So he's got Axemen in the middle. That's interesting. And we've got our heavy chariots. So what are they good against? They're good against Axemen, so that works. We've got the right tactic. I actually didn't check the tactic. We've got 112% discipline. So we've got the chariots fighting the Axemen, and then we've got spearmen fighting spearmen. Our archers are going to be flanking, and the spearmen placed on the other edge, which is fine. But it's going to be a massacre. It's going to be an absolute massacre. Our chariots are going to kill the units in the middle, and then the rest are just going to die. Boom. Problem solved. Are um, you still seeking spouse with you? Um, I do want to probably give you free hands. Nah, I think it should be fine. You're 49 loyalty. It should be fine. I can't... It should be. And then we beat his army back, which was pretty kind of decisive. And now we're going to go and take down his capital of Gebtu. Um, is the guy joining us? Yeah, he's joining us. That's cool. So we're going to take his capital down, and then we'll try to take the next target up north afterwards. That's going to be super interesting. But I do like how the river is like... Oh, do we stack him? Oh, we stacked him, all right. Yeah, he's been completely stacked. But I do like how the Nile River is only crossable on certain points. Um, in the vanilla game, you can just basically go from one side to the other, and the river's really small. It's not represented in a pretty big way. This damn thing is navigable. It's navigable, and it makes you uh, allows you to make pretty decent choke points, which is something I really like. And I would. Uh, this is like... A system that I would like to see in the like base Imperial Rome game, where the Nile River is just basically has quite a few choke points like this, and it's big. I mean, you shouldn't be able to walk across one side or the other. It's one of the biggest and longest river networks in the world, so I, I think the game should reflect that. And the, the mod does a good job of reflecting it. Um, Neckham wants military access, but you're not having that. That's my southern neighbour here. They they're horrible, and I don't like them. The fighting who? Epku? Who are they fighting? They must have joined someone else's war. Yeah, they've joined their friend's war. So, our rival's struck as well. He's gone for Tepihu. It looks like the swords move and they're going for the same thing. So, we'll quickly take them out. Of course, I will colonize this as soon as we can as well at some point. But the good thing is, by taking this, it's all part of our culture, all part of our religion, and it's not going to be too much of a problem. And then I can probably chain the war, to be honest. Can I make a claim on you? I don't have the PI required. We're going to need more PI. But as soon as I can, I'll try and get the claim going. We've got 500 men down here. Hopefully I can take this before he gets my city. I don't want him having that. There we go. The sacking of get to. Sometimes you just have to call it. Uh, so what do we do? Let the looting be gentle? Or let the men roam free? No. We want to present ourselves as the unificator of Egypt and not the destroyer. So we're going to let the looting be gentle. We don't want to kill too many of the people. Um... It, it, it just goes well with what we're trying to achieve. So we'll let the looting be gentle. We've taken what we need to take. And we're going to march over this side now. See if we can catch that dude. I actually don't need to. Once we occupy this, we're going to be fine. So we've occupied the war goal. Let's sue for peace. He wants to peace out. That's fantastic. So now... Oh, we gained a border with this guy, with the unit. We also have access to the colonizable land here. 
that we're going to want to take. Uh, but we also have access to the another city, which is going to be very interesting. So we'll take this, and of course, an extra city, extra gold, all that sort of stuff, more men. So let's do it. And it ups us to a regional power status, which is fantastic. Uh, the Gabutan elite, I think they're part of my culture. I'm, I'm fairly confident they are. It is all upper comedic. So we're going to pass judgment on them. We're going to bring them in. We'll bring them into the realm. The Unificator of Egypt is what we shall be known as. Uh, so we're going to welcome you. We're going to welcome you. And we're going to welcome you. We'll bring them all in. Uh, now we are a regional power. Does this change from the base game? I think it's pretty much the same. Provincial lords are going down a bit though, which is interesting. Which does make sense. The bigger you are, the harder it is to maintain loyalty, which is a good thing. I, I'm sure that's not in the base game. Um, so we'll take it. We'll take it. We'll take it. So now we are bigger. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, we've got another fort here, by the way, which is actually a pretty useful one. I, I, I do think it is pretty good. It's going to block this side. And of course, it blocks anyone coming from the east, which is what I like. Um, I'm going to quickly disband the men because I know we've got a few more units now. We have like loads more. Jesus Christ. We're literally doubled in size. Um, so we're going to be able to eat up quite a lot of stuff here. Um, let's go with... You're going to be the next target. Oh, I've got claims on you as well. Well, why didn't you say so? Oh, that is awesome. Um, I mean, I, I'm, I'm going to reduce now the army maintenance cost here. Just... Oh, that's why. Increased pay does what? Why did I gain a trade route? Ah, because I probably got rid of the culture happiness and a uh, reduction or uh, reduction, and it probably made them output more trade routes. That may be the potential thing, right? But anyway, let's go for. Can I go for some fruit here? A surplus gives us loyalty of characters. I'm taking that. I'm going to trade it with myself and two falcons known. Just because I want the loyalty of characters, it is just going to be super useful indeed. Uh, but anyway, it's time to end the episode here, people. Thank you so much for joining me. I've got a feeling that we're going to be we're going to enjoy this mod. We're going to enjoy it. We're going to enjoy creating the old kingdom again, uh, fighting our old rival Henena Sut. Um, and of course, if you guys are enjoying this and you want to see more Bronze Age mods, then please do consider smashing that like button as much as you can. It lets me know if you want to see this type of content. And of course, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, then please go ahead and subscribe for more content just like this. And uh, with all that said and done, thank you so much for joining me and. The next one will go to war against our other neighbor up here, unit, and uh, kind to expand our influence along the Nile. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye for now.